Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining today. Thank you so much for signing up for this session. So today we are going to talk about an important topic um, on Kubernetes paths. Uh, this is really important because when it comes to performance testing and uh, analyzing how the parts behaves, uh, some of the basic concept we're going to discuss today is going to really help you to go a long way. So this is going to be a quick 15 minutes lightning session. So the idea is to provide some food for thought. So to bring some concept in front of you so that you can take it over and start doing your own research and start learning more about it. Um, so let's get started. But before we move on, I just want to give a quick introduction about myself. Um, I work as a QA and a performance architect in MNC. I have about 15 years of IT experience. I also do some technical writing and also speak in some events. And so far I've judged about four hackathons. So it's been a great experience. Um, and also I've founded the association called American Association of IT Professionals. We are almost 1,200 uh, people strong at this moment. Uh, please go ahead and follow the page. So all the webinars and uh, all the technical related information we normally post there. So it's a good place for you to collaborate and also connect with the like-minded IT professionals. So please go ahead and follow there. Okay. So before we get deeper into what Kubernetes pods are and how failover testing needs to happen, uh, we have to make sure some basic concepts are clear, whoever is new uh, for this session. So I would like to go over some basic definitions first. So Kubernetes is an open source system, also known as K8s. Uh, it is an actually a product of Google. Um, it can automatically deploy, scale, manage and containerize the applications. So the main reason for having Kubernetes is, so traditionally the physical server used to host uh, operating system to all the required files for your application to work. So that was become really increasingly difficult because these days uh, the application deployment needs to happen more frequently, multiple times a day in some cases. And also it has to have a very low downtime. So Kubernetes sort of solves that problem. With the help of Docker, which has containerized uh, approach where we can package whatever software is required and all the dependencies into a Docker and uh, that image can be called directly. So we need not really have to deploy uh, anything on the physical server. So that sort of solves a majority of the issue. But with Kubernetes coupled with it, what it really does is uh, it can orchestrate the entire uh, deployment and uh, containerized applications. So that way you're getting more flexibility and uh, you're able to handle your application much more efficiently. So what is pod exactly in Kubernetes? So if you take a Kubernetes uh, cluster, it hosts multiple nodes. So each node has uh, uh, multiple pods, uh, which it can hold. Pod by definition goes as the smallest deployable unit, which has its own computing power. Um, so it has its own IP address, so it will be referencing to a specific uh, Docker image or need not be Docker or any other image. And whenever a traffic is coming through, uh, it is directly hitting to a pod. So you have a flexibility in Kubernetes to have multiple pods and they can have their own allocated CPU and memory. So that way you have much more control over these pods and also if there is a need, you can uh, scale up these pods, create more uh, pods as per your need. So the work is getting distributed. So Kubernetes has a very high uptime and also the failover condition is handled really well from Kubernetes. So now that we know what Kubernetes and the pods really are, let's look into the second concept that is failover testing. In the performance testing world, um, there are a couple of tests we always do to ensure system uh, reliability and the system is really stable. One of that is failover test. So basically what you're trying to do is your infrastructure has multiple servers. So let's assume if one of the server goes down for whatever issue in production, um, are you equipped in a way that the, the traffic is flowing to the remaining part of your infrastructure so that the end user is not getting affected. So typically uh, they will have multiple servers handling the load. Uh, it will be load balanced and it could be at the level of application server or web server or database server. So in generic terms, uh, when you have more than one infrastructure component handling your traffic, if one of the component goes down, um, will your system be able to automatically uh, route the traffic to the remaining infrastructure components and 
will that be able to serve it without having any performance degradation so that is something we really want to uh, check in failover test because in production you never know um even though with with having cloud things have become much more stable but still uh, it does have um, some internal errors or uh, region wise failures so there could be any any situation where you will face this so any companies which are very prominent uh, and user facing be it e-commerce or uh, be it healthcare or be it banking they really do not want any performance impact or end user impact that will automatically have a bigger impact in their reputation and also in their revenue so the typical infrastructure will always have um, a disaster recover servers or or a setup where the traffic can automatically flow through and most of the time if it's a database they will be having a sync from the background so the data is up to date so this is all about failover testing so the pod as we just saw in kubernetes it's a smallest deployable unit but pod has its own life cycle um if you actually see a typical pod life cycle would look something like this it always starts with um being in a pending status where uh the pod is about to be started but it is not running yet so when it is successfully able to create a pod and uh, then it the status will move to running so this is where the pod would uh, spend most of its life uh, it will be running it will be handling all the traffic and once the pod is successfully done its work we don't we know we don't need we don't need the pod anymore um, it can be gracefully shut down uh then it will automatically be in the status of succeeded that means it is being successfully terminated but for any reason if if the pod fails to gracefully shut down or if it uh, fails prematurely or if or if it fails uh, ahead of time for any issues or errors then it will go to the failed status so that means it is unsuccessfully terminated uh meaning we have something which caused the pod to fail then that needs to be looked uh, deeper into it and there are some cases where it can actually go to an unknown state when the pod stop responding and the kubelet stops reporting to the api server so then the status will go to unknown so now we are more interested to know what failed status is why a pod would actually fail and uh, if it fails let's say if it had if it is dealing with a multiple pods uh, in a cluster in a node if one of the pod automatically fails what will happen will the other pods get the traffic how how the entire setup works so there is a general misconception and a general thought that uh, if kubernetes is handling all the traffic we really don't have to worry it will automatically take care of the pods it pod will be always running pods cannot fail and uh, we we are always having a great uptime we really don't have to do any pod failover testing but that's not actually true a uh, pod can have failures pod can cause issues pod can crash at times so there are there are many reasons why it would happen um, so let's look into some major ones now the first one being a wrong container image and invalid registry permissions this is something you will figure out in the early stage of pod um, deployment itself but most of the time whenever the container image you are trying to reference uh, it's having a wrong reference or it doesn't exist or let's say if your kubernetes do not have a permission to fetch that container image then you will start getting uh, these errors then the pod will be failed to launch in this situation and another common error is out of memory so what really happens is you have a dedicated set of memory allocated to each pod and when you're dealing with a lot of traffic sometimes the memory allocations might not be enough and it will go overboard so if it goes out of memory uh, that will have an impact on the pod it can cause the pod to fail at this point so the other reason could be a validation error so pod has uh, a set of rules needs to be followed when it has to be created and before creation the validation is done if you have if you're not following any of the uh, tags properly if you're not giving the information properly then it could fail in the validation itself and the pod would uh, fail to launch at this point
The other reason could be missing the config map or a secret. So again, the configuration uh, plays a key role. Uh, uh, if you have any mismatch there, then it would fail to launch. So there is another concept of liveness and readiness probe. So usually when a container is up, it doesn't mean there are no issues. Um, so what will happen is um, in Kubernetes, it will be constantly making a probe or a check to make sure everything is running as expected. Uh, if there is any failure, if uh, the cluster is having any issues or not able to probe properly, then that means the pod can also get affected and it might fail as well. And now the last one is the most common one whenever it exceeds the allocated CPU and memory limits. So each pod, as I was saying, has its own CPU and memory. And also there's an op option for you to allocate an additional memory and CPU as a upper limit. So whenever the allocated memory is uh, used, then it, it has a flexibility to utilize and go beyond the allocated memory up to the upper limit you have set it up. But keep in mind the total memory or the limits you are setting up for your entire uh, cluster or your Kubernetes should be what you have allocated in total. So um, you cannot really go and uh, put an upper limit whatever you want. So the total allocated memory and CPU you have for your entire infrastructure that sort of plays a crucial role here as well that needs to be equally distributed. Um, if you figure out there is not enough memory or CPU uh, available among the pods, uh, there is always option to increase the limits and uh, you can reassign the, the desired amount for these pods. Now that we know what the pod is, what Kubernetes is, what performance testing failover is, so let's quickly talk about why do we need it or do we really need to do any pod level uh, failover test. So ideal condition, uh, the best case, everything works fine, uh, failover happens, uh, the limits for the pods are up, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, but I would like to say consider uh, a scenario where things are not ideal. So let's take a very basic or a very simplest uh, representation of uh, the flow of traffic. So let's say there is a website which is sending some traffic and Kubernetes has created a couple of pods. Um, it has a Docker image and it, it sort of serves everything. And um, it has a database server. Let's say it's, it's based in cloud. So to simplify, our focus is mainly on the pod layer. Um, so in a typical scenario, you send a traffic from a, uh, from a website, uh, end user would not have any idea what's happening behind the scene. Internally, Kubernetes will have uh, pods created as per the predefined values and it will take up the load and uh, it will be processed if it has, and uh, it, it will pull the required information from database and it will start processing. So everything is going well. Um, so typically what will happen is when you have two pods, uh, you will try to divide the traffic. So based on the expected amount of traffic you're going to get, the pods will have um, its own allocations. Let's say uh, at an ideal condition, pods are uh, used about 75%, both of them, and they're, both of them are handling the incoming traffic. And um, so they are not hitting the threshold. Um, let's say they're using 75% of the upper limit they have and uh, everything is going well. And slowly, for one of the reasons, um, one pod fails. So now, so Kubernetes going by the books will automatically realize the pod has failed uh, because pod will not be responding and it will automatically recreate a secondary pod. But for this to happen, somewhere between one to three minutes will be taken. So in that one to three minutes, uh, the whatever traffic is coming in, it will automatically route to the single pod which is available, right? And as I said, both of them will be using 75% of their upper limit. So now only one pod is serving, the remaining 75% of the traffic is coming to the secondary pod. So it has to take the additional load. 
so now we see there is a possibility of pod getting going over the allocated cpu and memory having some out of memory issue or not able to handle the such a huge uh, website traffic and uh, you will see the response time slowing down uh, the end user request getting rejected um, so all these issues started to uh, creep up so this is the main reason why a failover test needs to happen at pod level too even though ideally everything should work fine but you never know there are some uncertainties which can cause the pods to uh, fail as well so in this condition if the secondary pod is not able to take the additional load that's definitely going to have a performance impact but there is one uh, important concept um, in kubernetes that is called as horizontal pod auto scaling this is something very interesting so there is a mechanism where you can actually tell kubernetes that let's say i have two pods and uh, you have incoming traffic which is going really high so i'll give you an access or a permission to increase the pods maybe up to five so if you set this up um, then automatically if the second pod is not able to take the expected load additional pods will be created and that will be able to handle the additional loads in this case. So other than horizontal uh, scaling, there is also vertical scaling. You can do the capacity increase, but horizontal scaling is something more apt for the situation. You will be able to add more pods if there is a need. So in general, I just wanted to tell that um, Kubernetes is one of the best uh, advancement in technology which has happened. It is near perfect. It pretty much takes care of everything automatically. Uh, we really don't have too much thing to worry about. But still, there are some scenarios where performance testing or a failover testing makes sense. Um, so make sure you run it through and discuss this with your development team or a concerned business team or stakeholders. See if there's possibility to do a pod failover. So this is more of ensuring if even if there is a worst condition, you are actually in a position to serve the additional loads. So that's being said, thank you so much for attending this session. Hope it was uh, helpful. Um, if you have any thoughts, if you have any suggestions or any topics which we should be focusing next, please write it down in the comments. And uh, if you are using Kubernetes in your project, and if you're dealing with any pod level uh, testing, uh, we'll be more than happy to know about it. Again, pod level performance testing, not something very aggressively done, um, but that's something to think about and uh, find the use cases where it can actually make sense. So that's my um, LinkedIn handle. Uh, you can connect with me. Uh, feel free to send out um, a connect request. I'll be happy to establish a professional connection with you guys. And also that's the link for our association. Please be part of it. Uh, we have one more interesting session happening next, and that is going to be on the observability um, in performance testing. Please enroll yourself. And uh, we also have a YouTube channel where this uh, all these recordings will go in. So till we meet next time, uh, thank you so much. Hope this session was uh, useful for you. Uh,